Hello everybody, this is Spirelli and welcome to Disc Elysium because I'm stupid and I was just sitting there thinking you know, I have a really big game going on with Divinity, Original Sin, so I should play some shorter games on the side so I don't have two gigantic games to play but then I was also thinking, hey, <laughs> the new version is out where they have a lot more voice acting. I think it's like fully voice acted now. And that seems really interesting to me. I did start this game before, but I am eager to experience it again. I haven't gone super duper mega far. Um, I do know a bit of the beginning of what's happening, but yeah. Welcome to Disco Elysium. So, first of all, we have to decide whether we want to be a thinker, extremely intelligent, very bad with people, knows interesting facts, comes up with original ideas, sensitive, very psychological, a magnetic personality but unstable, might begin to lose his mind, or physical, extremely physical, interacts with the world through his body, gets things done, but dumb as a rock. Okay, create my own, but I think I'm gonna go with one of these. You know what? I'm just, I'm just gonna be. I'm just gonna be a thinker. I'm so smart. The fear is at home in the mirror. It is their dress. Even the clearest water, if deep enough, can drown. Thank you for that. There is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious for men, Cine. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never. Ever. Never, ever, ever? Never, ever, ever, baby. I'll see if they keep on existing then. An inordinate amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. <laughs> this is great. Yes, it is. What What was that about the ex-something? An awareness creeps up on you. A mass lies hidden in your dead angle. Soaking in some lurid acidic sauce. It's bloated and shameful. A ball of meat surrounding you. This is a terrible line of questioning, and it will only lead to more awareness of the meat thing. The meat thing, my body. No, I wanted to know about the ex something. Ex love, ex tenderness. It is foolish of you to resurface to the loss. Not after all the damage you've suffered to get here. Some of it irreversible. Stay. Sail with me through the abyss of a logic zone. Arnold Z, never let me go. Alright. Nothing town to fuck all, Barra. Okay. Let's visit. The ancient zero home. Great choice, Elder One. It has always been like this, and it always will. <laughs> Don't stop, keep singing. Sing me the song of death. The song of death is sweet and endless. But what is this? Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meet around you. A sensation. Ooh. Like a fly to the ointment, your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert, hurting, longing, dancing to disco music. Stop! I don't want to hear anything more about this sensation. Take me back to the formless, disembodied nothing. The stench of liquor rises from your mouth, and with it, an ungodly headache. Who, 
am I? What sort of creature does this to their own mouth? A fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound. A clarion call from hell. Somehow, you know what it is. A Caprice can name a motor carriage. Open your eyes. Oh, there we are. Sleeping comfortably. What do we have here? Okay. So. This is us. Don't think we have a clear image of ourselves. This magnum sized bottle of Commodore Red is empty. Looks like someone tore out the tape while the song was playing. What's this? Empty cassette. Yep, take it. This reel to reel tape player is still on, rolling empty. Hold to highlight. Okay, there's a shoe. And I am immediately wearing it. I am rocking the shoe. Oh, maybe I should put on pants first. You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. Push them out. It says whirling in rags on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. The whirling in rags is a hostel cafeteria on the urban coast, frequented by dock workers. So I guess I know those things because uh, I am smart. What is this? The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. Okay, so this is how they do the rolls. I basically have to do a visual calculus, check it's easy, and then it gives me a percentage. There's always a chance to win and always a chance to lose, no matter the percentage. And some of those rolls you can reroll and others not. But let's assess, let's try to assess the damage. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. Did I break it with my own hands? Look at them. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. What did this then? More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. Uh, assess the size of the impact? It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. The single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy enough if thrown with force. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you could still find the other one on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. I don't need it. I don't need anyone. The window agrees. Its cracked smile is cold and sparkly. <laughs> and what do we have here? This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. Pull on the fan. The blades come squeaking to a halt. It should be easier to reach the tie now. Yeah, so... Sometimes there's effects on a roll, like here, plus three, because the fan is turned off, which helps. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap. It's released from the blade. What you have in your hand is a truly hideous thick tie, with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. Hold on a light bulb. A terrible mistake. Turn the lights off immediately. You can practically feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. Bring it on. Your eyes burn oh. with photosensitivity. It's not good. Oh, they were serious. So I have here stats, I have my health, and then I have my morale. And apparently it just damaged my health. 
by turning on light, which is, that's how bad our state is in. Roach failed to describe how rank it smells in here. You should have sent a poet. We see bottles in the bathtub. Wine, beer, and sweet liquors. Am I wearing... Yes, I'm wearing the necktie. So they all have some kind of stats. Sometimes positive, sometimes negative. This gives me less savoir-faire, savoir -faire, but more electrochemistry. And this is all of the stats, <laughs> which is why I didn't want to start up with like making my very own character because it's a lot, but we will get to know them, I think, as we go. Nothing to do here. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Oh, man, that, that's some um, masculine energy right there. Was this not the same Eno that founds empires and lays waste to cities? Virile, uncaring towards the little things? Probably not, no. Hot water sprays from the faucet's base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the vague impression of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there underneath the soft vapor um really nothing really all recollection of the person you are the people in your life and even the world you're in has drowned in a sea of blood alcohol this was no mere night of drinking it was a deluge of world ending proportions well wipe the mirror as you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror abort you clearly have not thought this through you won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. Maybe I should touch it first, make sure there's nothing wrong with my face. Yeah, there is definitely something wrong with it. What? What's wrong? Where to even begin? There is the bloatedness, then the swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. I'm sorry, touch my nose. Bet you are. Your nose feels like a small balloon in the middle of your face. It hurts when you honk it. It doesn't appear to be a particularly tiny nose either. Not with all the drinks it's absorbed for you. At least my tongue is okay. Touch my tongue, which is a absolutely normal thing to do, which everybody does always, right? It's not. It's swollen and snail-like, wriggling between your fingers. Okay, I'm, I'm ready to wipe the mirror now. Behold. <laughs> Look, I got my face. Look at it. Look at it in all its glory. I have a grin on my face. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? Of course I do. It's, um, is it some kind of superstar? I think I'm a superstar. It appears you're also dead. There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh, wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? I think it might be because I'm a superstar. Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. No, no, no. This is what superstars do. Keep making the face. You can't, can you? It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? Um... I'm insinuating that I'm vaguely sympathetic. I think I'm sort of pulling it off too, in a sad has been kind of way. There's some charm to it. There might have been, ten years ago. It's little more than a cadaverous spasm now. Okay. Oh, so this is basically impossible. There's a three percent chance because there's always a chance of me rolling a six six. So I can't attempt to stop the expression. Dig deep into your mind to locate the source of the expression. Okay, this is a white check you made, we'll try it later. So let's, let's try. It belongs in the new, the third decade of the current century. Enough time had passed from the failure of the revolution that, for a fleeting moment, free market economy seemed like the ultimate 
uncontested way of life for our species. Okay. Things were good. It was smooth sailing. People made gold and champagne tinted interiors and facades to suit the times, calling this the new style. But more importantly, disco happened. For Revachol, your city, that meant only one thing. Guillaume La Million. If it doesn't rhyme, you're not pronouncing it right. Out of the dazzling swirl of disco music, in an open air, what de nuit, somewhere in Revachol West, Guillaume's blonde mane appeared on the screen. He sang some bullshit, then he made the expression. How long ago was the new? Some 20 odd years. There is a vast ocean of time between right now and the expression. Looking good on you or anyone. Humanity has run aground in that time. It's a different world now. The expression is a relic. So I adopted it. Why? Everyone loved it. Maybe you thought some of the stardust would rub off on you. Maybe it did. Either way, it's all gone now. Only the grimace remains. I feel a need to add a clicking sound when I make it. The click is used to spur on a horse. It also features heavily in Guillaume Le Million's regional mega hit, Don't Worry, Your Pretty Little Head. Well, anything else? Like, who am I? Why did I drink myself into oblivion? You have some understanding of the near history of disco. The rest is darkness, aside from the useless fact that the motor carriage outside was a Caprice Canema. I guess that's it then. It doesn't have to be. You can swoon over Guillaume and his champagne cork smile whenever you want to. Maybe some of the stardust will return. And this I won't try. Plus two, know the origin, still super low because I have like no electrochemistry. Let the beer be for now. And I think that's the room, so let's go outside. I can hold things in my hand once I found things to hold. Miraculously doing better. I can suddenly walk again. Something on the table. Oh, some money. So let's go outside and get that shoe. Because I'm a master detective, so I detected that it must have been my shoe flying through that window. There it is. Oh, wait. I guess the friny wine washes over you. There they both are. Two identical shoes. Both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin. Reunited on your feet like two baby crocodiles. How do they fit? Good. They're balanced. Comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told. My, my baby crocodile shoes. Yeah, so there's tools that I could get which I can equip. Tuss! Nothing. And then this is also not important yet. But there was a thought here. It's about to see makes you dizzy, okay. So whenever that pops up, I'm having a thought that I can follow up on. See what I feel like in different environments or about different things. Anything else? No, let's talk to... Oh, wait, let's look at that. Hello, officer. The calendar says March, the year is 51. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Her eyes are brown and her face is speckled with birthmarks. She can't be more than 28. A silver jumpsuit falls off her like scale armor, sparkling. This is the sparkle of too many nights out on the city. Officer, am I military personnel? Uh, no. Wait, I know. I'm a businessman. Chief executive. Executive officer, right? The young woman shakes her head slowly. Officer, 
could be an artistic statement. You're already prone to those. That's too wild. Chief technical officer is what I am? No. You're a police officer, sir. <laughs> God damn it, right? I'm a policeman and don't you forget it. Okay, cool. I won't. No need to be alarmed. I was just getting into character, you know. Okay. How did you know I'm a police officer? Sir, you've been here for three days. On official police business, as you put it. And what business is that? I couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. That's as much as I know as well. You have no doubt about the drinking. But do you strike yourself as a tight-lipped drunk? She must have heard something. I can try to make the face on her. But, um, very low chances. Uh... I don't remember being a cop or anything else. Could it be because of the drinking? She raises an eyebrow. The cigarette sizzles. She hasn't had time to put her makeup on. This is her morning cigarette. She looks tired. Her beauty waning faster than it ought to at her age. But who in their right mind will let me be an officer of the law? Don't be so harsh on yourself. They let almost anyone be a police officer. Well, I might not know where I am, or who I am, or what Kubri cinema is. Kinema. How I know what one sounds like. She nods. That's it. Good monologue. <laughs> she smiles, flushing her pearl white teeth. Should go gang now. I'm not gonna try to smile on you. Of course. Be Puts careful, the officer. They don't like the police around here. Okay, so this is where you Something are. Something stirs in you as she's about to go. Call it an instinct, a need. The need to ask questions. It's like you've said the words a million times before. She looks back at you, a light glinting off her eyes. Before you go, I have some questions for you. Yes. Your room is almost next to mine. Did you hear anything last night? There was the usual ruckus. Loud disco music. Did I have any visitors? I couldn't say. It's impossible to hear people speaking from over here. She nods toward room three. Loud disco music. Oh, yes. Various artists. Ostentatious orchestration prime among them. She raises an eyebrow waiting for the name to connect with you. Oh, that. Yeah. Whoa. The less said about OO, the better. OO were huge where I come from. I was very young then, of course. Like, seven. Life gets hard, but we go on. Yeah, we go on all right. I don't know about that. At around two o'clock, the disco stopped, and there was a change of pace. What happened? A slow, sad song started playing. Like organ music on repeat. That went on for quite a while. Some of the time you were yelling along to it. Was I singing this? Show her the empty case of the smallest church in Saint Saint? Yes, there was a church in there. A really small church. Like the smallest, saddest church in the whole world. It was about that. And also... What else? That it doesn't matter anymore and that we're alone now. It was difficult to tell. The song itself was very quiet and soft, but you sounded like a winded boar, sir. It was hard to understand what you were singing on top of it. I'm sorry. Don't be. I was going out later anyway. It didn't bother me. Then what happened? Then you started screaming and trashed the place. That's so me. What did I do? A window was smashed. A tape player, probably. The song stopped. And furniture, too. A real destructathon. There was screaming. Then I think uh, you passed out. Please tell me there wasn't anything else. There was. 
I think you screamed that you didn't want to be this type of animal anymore. I may have misheard, but it was sort of memorable. I went out afterwards. Everything was quiet by then, around four or five. And that was it. Tommy, is it uh, 51 now? It's 51. What century? The current century. And that's what? What what number? Centuries don't have numbers. They have names. And this is the current one. Uh, how many centuries have there been then? Civilization has existed for 8,000 years, sir. She grins. What's so funny? You're right. There is nothing funny about civilization. <sighs> where exactly is here? Where am I? You're in a hostel, sir. But where are we? Where in the world? We are in Revachol. Revachol is the disgraced former capital of the world, divided into zones of control under foreign occupation. Half a century after a failed world revolution, she is central to our moment in time. Revachol forever. Forever and ever. And ever and ever. Out of the corner of your eye, you see the hair on the back of your hand standing on end. It feels as though low-grade lightning is coursing through you. You must be hypersensitive from the hangover. So, uh, last question. What is it that they have against the police here? The dock workers are pretty cocky. They think they're police enough. At least here on the coast. I can't say about the rest of the city. Okay, you can go now. Glad to have been of assistance. Uh, to save, good, good. Looks like she left a nice long stop in ashtray. It's still smoking. Is there more money on the table? This is the weekend edition of the satirical newspaper Trom Le Monde. Uh, if I butcher any of the French pronunciations, please excuse me. There, I think, are a lot of French words, names in here. And I'm not always sure how to pronounce them. Oh, okay. Just looking at your crocodile shoes. This is where the lyrics would be. Big old karaoke mitt, just standing for someone to sink into it. Well, that could be me. Speakers connected to the radio. The music is seasoned with static. You should totally sing karaoke here. The first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. My soul's cubic content is obscured by the hangover. Of course. At this point, precise measurements of your soul can only be performed from the outside. It needs to be heard. Well, now that makes sense. Through a PA system. Yeah. By other people. Yep. This goes well with a the theory I'm developing that I'm a down on my luck superstar person. Who is mistakenly identified as a cop for his prominent jawline? Yes, sounds likely. You should probably go on stage and pose for a moment when you're done with this thought. See if it works. What should I sing when it comes to it? You should sing the sad small church song from that tape you found thought it was obvious. I was thinking maybe I could sing something happy, like from those ostentatious orchestrations, Fox? No, no. Don't sing the happy song. It's stupid. Sing the sad song. It's profound. You would need another copy of the tape first, though. The one upstairs is destroyed. Okay. This feels right. You belong here. Think this is my first quest in karaoke. You need to find a sufficiently tragic tape, then play it on a boombox to memorize the lyrics, then ask the cafeteria manager to perform, preferably in the evening, more people at the bar then. And I need to make them sad. So yeah, this is just the very introduction to it. We will soon get out to the world, see what we're here for in the first place and what we can do. Um, but I think you're getting the grips of what the game is like, so I'm gonna stop it here for now. I'm gonna see you again soon with more.